Hi Mariam, uh, this is Justin here. Uh, hopefully you're fine. Okay, I uh, just want to go through with you some of the the thing that we left out uh, a few days ago about light and optics. All right. So hopefully you'll be able to understand a bit. Um, the previous uh, lecture was a bit fast, so I'm just afraid that you might not be able to catch up. So what I want to do is um, today, I would like to just pretty much like uh, give you a very short summary about what we did last week, uh, last few days, sorry, and also probably just extend our classes a bit and to go in further into the next part of the subchapters of this uh, light and optics. So uh, remember last week we, we go through the plane mirror, the characteristics of the image of the plane mirror as well uh, we went through the what they call this the characteristics of the concave mirrors right so um, here there are several concave mirrors uh, we have actually explained to you that i have actually explained to you that uh, depending on the position of the objects all right so if the position of the object is uh, as they as seen from the first diagram over here let me strike down here all right so the first diagram okay, let me use a red color pen if the position of the image is like assume as from the first diagram, you can see that basically uh, if the position of the object, sorry, not the image is here, right? Uh, you will see that basically it is uh, before f, means uh, is the distance is less than the focal point. Uh, you tend to see that the objects, the image will actually enlarge, all right, over here, okay? This shows that the image is actually larger than the objects. And the image is actually a virtual image, uh, upright and magnified, as well as it is not inverted. What I mean not inverted means the object is actually standing at this, uh, in the upright position. Then if you go to the second condition, whereby if the object is placed on the focal point, all right, so let me tell something. Mirror always have a focal point. It's depending if it's a curve or a concave mirror, um, if it's a concave or a convex mirror, there will always be a focal point. A focal point is actually a point where all the lights will pass through it. Right? I wouldn't say 100% all, but a majority of the light will actually pass through the focal point. So when you have, for example, a concave mirror, uh, the position where all the light passes through it, that is called a focal point. All right? And if you see there's a C over here, this means uh, the double the length of the focal point. It, depending on how the, uh, the mirrors are built okay the uh, form so um, the focal point may actually change okay some will be having a shorter focal point some will be having a longer focal point so it depends actually on the shape of the mirror so let's say if you place the object over here you can see over here and uh, the object is actually the image actually produced from the object is virtual magnified and, and the image is actually at infinite infinity all right um, so what i mean by infinity the image should be um, uh, what I call this, uh, the image will be basically formed at an infinity. It means you will not be able to, uh, what I call this, uh, it will not be able to form on the screen because it's a virtual image, all right? And normally the image actually uh, larger, okay? And if you would place the object at a position of F, the focal point, and uh, less than 2F or less than a C, the C stands for the uh, center, so basically the object here, you can see the condition, the image is a real image. You can look over here. The image, they are actually inverted. You can look at the sign inverted. And basically uh, as well as the uh, image actually enlarged. So if you will have a, a man standing over here, let's say you have, let's say a, a candle over here, right? What happens is uh, the image is, which actually forms is a larger candle and it's always in the inverted uh, position okay then the next one would be like if you place the object at C that means the two times the length of the focal point so what happens that the image form is actually at C as well all right uh, it's the same size uh, but the image is actually inverted so let's say if you have a candle over here okay it's a candle and this is the mirror the mirror is over here uh, you can see that basically another candle will be forming over here which is actually the same size as the the object and the image right so they are actually the same size all right real image same size and as well as inverted 
So the last uh, position that we want to discuss in the concave mirror view, what happens is when the object is placed at pretty much like um, further than 2F or further than C. So if the object is placed further than C, uh, the image will be actually smaller. So this is the case whereby um, the object is so far away that uh, even though the object is very, very large, but then the image capture will be like so small. All right. So this is one of the characteristics. And finally, uh, the one that we probably will miss out would be the, what do you call this? Will be the convex uh, mirrors. Uh, convex mirrors is a bit special because um, it, it, it only has like, uh, depend regardless of where's the position of the object. Okay. Uh, the characteristics of the image will be always be virtual, upright and diminished. Okay. The reason why convex lenses, are, uh, convex, sorry, convex mirror have this kind of an image uh, one of the reasons is because uh, convex lenses, uh, convex mirror, the 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 mirror actually uh, works in a way it diverges all the uh, the what they call this, the reflected light, right? So it always diverges, and because of that, the image will be actually in virtual. So this is the virtual image. Uh, it is always upright and diminished. Diminished is getting smaller, lah. Okay. So this is the one that we actually discussed, all right. Uh, then let's look at the next page here. Okay, uh, let me erase a bit so that we can you know you can have a, a nicer, cleaner board. Okay, uh let me erase it. Okay. It's so happened that this the Myra board doesn't have a function that if you just press one and everything just delete away. It doesn't have that function, that'll be great. Okay, uh, the next part will be like, we are talking about refraction, the one that we actually, you know, we want to see. It. So as you see, a reflection actually occurs in two conditions. Let me explain to you, uh, refraction occurs in two conditions. The first condition is when light ray travels from one medium to another medium. The second condition would be like um uh refraction occurs when okay oh my god okay from one medium to another medium all right so due to a different medium uh the density of the two different medium will not be the same so when light travels from one medium to another medium we do expect that there's there'll be certain changes in what they call this there will be certain changes in the speed of light. The speed of light can be either increased or actually decreases. It actually depends, all right? So speed changes actually. So let me write here, speed changes. Okay, speed changes, okay? All right, so uh, these are the two things that we really need to understand, okay? Uh, if you look here closely, right? Uh, if you look at this diagram, this diagram closely, all right, you can see that the light ray actually enters from a less dense medium and it enters in the a higher density medium. So it can be, we can actually assume that actually here, the this is air and this is glass. So as the light travels from the air to the glass, we do expect a few things, all right? Number one, you can see over here, this eye here, this eye over here, it actually represent, right, the incident angle, okay? So when the light rays enters, okay, this is the incident angle, but as it travels into the prism, okay, in the glass, you tend to know that the refracted angle, I don't say reflected, but I say refracted angle, it goes towards the normal. That means it, it comes nearer to the normal and the angle of a refraction angle is actually smaller. All right. So the refraction angle is smaller, but at the same time, the speed of a light traveling in the glass will actually be slower. The speed of a light traveling in the glass will be actually slower. And that's the reason why when light rays travel from less dense medium to a denser medium, from here the less dense medium to a denser medium, we do expect a change in the form of, number one, the speed actually gets slower. Number two, the refracted ray actually goes towards the normal. I mean, it goes towards, it actually bends and it moves towards the normal, right? So as the light actually travels all the way from one end of a glass, from here, let me mark the first end will be A, the last, to the last part of a glass, to the end of the glass, all right? As it leaves the glass, basically it leaves from a denser medium 
to a less dense medium, right? So what happens is the speed will actually change. In this case, the speed will actually move faster because it goes, uh, it moves faster in the air. And you can see the refracted angle over here, the refracted angle over here becomes bigger in size, right? The angle becomes bigger. So we can actually we can actually conclude here, right? Uh, we can actually conclude here. Uh, speed of light will always travel fastest in uh, what I call this in a less dense area comparing to a, a denser medium, right? So here we can just see we can actually conclude a few things over here. Okay, speed. Okay, let me put it nicely. Here we can actually here we can put it here. Speed of light will travel faster at less dense medium. Okay. Speed of light will travel. slower at dense medium so this is really important this is really important and uh, it actually tells us a few things it actually tells us that yes we always say that speed of light is always constant but it is not necessarily true it depending on the medium which are, they are traveling actually right so in a in a in a vacuum environment when there's no uh, uh less when there's no gas particles so speed of light will always be the fastest right but as as the light travels from a space which is a vacuum into our earth which is like we have uh, on the earth itself it mostly has a lot of water vapors and so on right this you will you do understand that the speed of light will actually slows down right so it slows down and because speed of light slows down sometimes um what you see is you're gonna see a diffractions of light. Uh, then, uh, what happens? This this is the reason why uh sky will tend to look blue color because why, um the blue color light will be diffracted downwards, right? And that's what makes the sky looks blue in color, right? Okay, so if you look at the the second part over here, uh, the second part. Let me explain to you. This is actually a uh, we call it Snell's law, all right. So this is the formula for Snell's law. It's very simple, and this is also another formula for Snell's law. So personally, I would recommend you to use this formula instead of this. Instead of the first one, I will recommend you to use a second formula because the second formula is a, uh, it is more robust and you can use it for different types of questions. And normally, you will not be able to do it. You know, will not be able to get it wrong if you use a second formula. But for the first question, for the first formula, sometimes, you know, if you are very careless and you apply it wrongly, you may get the wrong answer, okay? So, let's look at the example over here. It's a very simple example. So, let's look here. Light travels from oil to air. So, this is oil and this is air. So, as you know, oil is always denser. Is it denser? Uh, no, oil is less dense than air, right? Air is, um, sorry, it's air. oil is denser than Denser than air, right? Oil is denser than so air. Is, so you can see here the angle of our the angle of our the angle of the polycidal is this here degrees. The angle of our the angle of our fraction is sixty degrees. It must be. I can ask you to find the refractive index, right? Index. So based on this formula over here, we can actually uh, we can actually come up with our own uh, simple formula. Uh, refractive index formulas are given to you by this refractive index. And is sine theta sine theta. Okay, so what is that? Na Na is the uh, so we can call this thing very simple. Uh, the air and the below is the oil. So okay, let's let's not look at this example. Let's do it ourselves. So top is air, bottom is the oil, right? So we can put it N A sine theta air equals the N oil sine theta oil, right? 
So what is the N air? The N air is the refractive index of uh, in the air, and normally N air is always one. It is always one. It's always a constant one, regardless of whatever equation. The N air is always one. Sine theta air is a sine sixty. And N oil is the refractive index of the oil. Sine forty, right? You always just have to remember something over here, Mariam. Always remember when you find the angle, right? When you find the angle, it is always from the normal line. This is a normal line. It's always from the normal to the either for, to the incident or to the refractive uh, line. Okay, it's always from the normal here. Okay, we always take this. What do you call this? This angle. You must not take the angle from here. You must not take from the angle from the axis to the incident or to the reflected angle. You must not take from here. This is wrong. Okay? Just have to remember that. Right? Because in exam, I find that a lot of students, they, they use the angle on the, you know what they call this? On the, they, they use the wrong angle, right? So then too bad, you're going to get wrong for your exam and you will not be given any scores or any marks for it. So sine 60 is 0 0.866 uh, and oil sine 40. I can't remember what is sine 40. I think it's something to do with um, sine 40. Let me use my calculator. Oh, 0 0.6427. 0 0.6427. Two eight right two seven times two eight. So n oil equals zero point eight six six divided by zero point six four zero point six four two eight. N oil equals to zero point eight six six by zero point six four two eight. So you're gonna get six six divided zero point six four two eight. Okay, sine 60, let me double check, sine, oh, okay, you're gonna, you're supposed to get 1.347, right, I guess the answer here is wrong, I'm very sorry, it should be 1.347, okay, All right, that's, that should be it. Um, what is the meaning of refractive index, uh, refractive index tells us, right, uh, it actually tells us two things. Number one, it tells us right. Um, if you will compare the what do you call it, it's actually a ratio to compare the uh what do you call this um uh, the speed of a light when it actually travels from uh one medium to another. Uh, if the speed of light travel from one medium to another medium, all right. So it actually tells. So the higher the refractive index. Um, the the slower the light actually travels in that particular medium, right? You do expect that, okay? So for vacuum, the the refractive index for vacuum is always one. If it's a normal air, uh, we we'll, we we'll, we we'll consider still one, but as you goes on to something a liquid like alcohol or liquid like for example like um, diamonds and so on, yeah. Uh, you tend to find that the the refractive index actually increases. All right, so uh, like in the normal water, the refractive index is also more than one. So that's the reason why um. Uh, that's the reason why like, the speed of a light in a particular medium, which is a denser medium, denser medium, denser than the water, uh, denser than the normal air, will tend to move slower. Right, so we tend to move slower. Okay, uh, let's see first this is the next thing. Okay, this is cool. Okay, I'm, 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 I will need some space over here. I'm going to move this thing. Let's leave it over there. And let's go to the third part. Let's see what can we see from here. Yeah. So, this basically illustrates more and it tells us more about the refractive index. And the law of refraction index states that, number one, you can see over here. This is really important. I want you to remember this. Uh, the A, the refracted, the, the incident ray, the refracted ray, and the normal line all lies on the same plane. This is the first law, very similar to the law of reflection, but this is law of refraction. And the second law, the ratio of sine i over sine r is always constant. That's the second law. And this is the Snell law that I told you just now. And basically, yeah, what happens, what happens when refraction happens? What happens when refraction happens? 
A. The refracted ray will be refracted either or towards or away from normal. The speed of light ray varies when the light travels from a medium to or from one medium to another medium. Uh, what happens when refraction? What happens when refraction? That is funny. This this line is a bit something is wrong with this English over here, but then okay. I'm not gonna rephrase this right now because um I'm gonna leave it right now. Let me go to find what is the real uh sentence is all about. Then uh you know, probably I'll just update you the next class. Okay, uh there are other formulas that actually explain the refraction uh refraction of light, and the first one will be here. The speed of light in a vacuum divided the speed of light in a medium. So this is basically if you are able to find the speed of light in a vacuum, which is actually equal to 3 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Then if you know the refraction index over here, you'll be able to find the speed of a light in that particular medium. Okay. Okay, this is the first one that we need to know. Okay. So uh this is also another formula that you need to memorize, and this formula you need to memorize as well. Okay, right. So have to memorize this all this formula. Okay, um, uh, Mariam, I tell you what. I have actually uploaded uh these notes into one of uh what do you call this our e portal, right? Uh, I will send you a link so that you are able to add yourself in, and from there you're able to download the notes and the exercises. Okay, but if you don't, you can actually log into the Myro bot. Okay, and you can just download it from you know from here as well. Uh, either way will be fine okay so i'll be sending you a link to we're using another software called lark l-a-r-k lark suite okay and i believe that that will actually help to sort out a lot of your problem a lot of your all the notes and so on okay let's look at the next question uh question five okay question five actually explain about uh total internal reflection so this is really a very important chapter as well so the process happens when the angle of an incident is larger than a critical angle. So the question is, uh, what is this trying to tell you? What do you mean by the angle of incident is larger than a critical angle? Okay, we're gonna discover this. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this later, probably in another five more minutes from now. The angle of incident larger than a critical. The first thing, right? So look here. So, um, I will tell you something, okay, uh, for total internal reflection, uh, this is really um, fiber optics lines, uh, today we are talking about uh, internet line, okay, so internet line needs high speed, okay, uh, high speed, uh, what do you call this, uh, data transfer, so besides having, uh, like for example, um, some data transfers, uh, they are using fiber optic to transfer information from one place to another place, right? So they're using um, internet cable and the internet cable is made out of fiber optics, okay? So if you look around you, okay, a lot of internet cables are pretty much like um, like Malaysia, like um, Southeast Asia, they have their own cable, uh, they have their own undersea cable that will actually connect to places like Singapore, India, or probably it's all connected to Hong Kong and Thailand. Okay, Hong Kong and uh, Hong Kong and Japan, right? And there's also another underground cable connecting from from what they call it from Asia all the way to Europe and all the way to what they call it US. Okay, uh, we hardly rely on in uh, from what they call it uh internet from we don't really propagate uh, information through the satellite disk because it's very expensive we only use the satellite disk uh, if you satellite if we are using the global positioning satellite okay but when it talks about data transfer right we all uh, we always use the C cable to link up from one continent to another continent because most of the servers are actually located they are located in US and in Europe there's still some servers which are located in China. <coughs> so if we are able, if we need to communicate with people from across the world, uh, communicate can be many ways, can be using Facebook, can be using Skype, right? So we most of the time we need to use the 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 C cable, right? So this is really important, okay? And because cables, uh, C cables, they're using uh, fiber optics, so you do expect the that 
the line, the internet line is very, very fast. Speed of light. So for total internet reflection to actually occurs, right, to actually happens, it needs to fulfill two conditions. Okay. Total internal reflection. It needs two conditions. The first condition is the, the light has to travel from dense to less dense medium that's the first condition okay and the second condition is the incident angle is more Is more than a critical angle, say, right? So these are the two things. Okay, uh, the first law is pretty simple. That means light must travel from a dense medium to a less dense medium. So this is one of the condition in order to get a total internal reflection. So what do you mean by dense to a less dense condition? So for example, let's say example. Uh, let's say this is uh, example. Okay, let's say these. Uh, there are two pieces of solid over here. Okay, uh, let's say, okay, I wouldn't say solid. Let's put it a simple way. Let's talk about air and water. Okay, let's talk about air and water. So this is actually water. This is actually air. Okay, so for, uh, put a bracket over here. For total internal reflection to occur, right, the light ray has to travel from all the way from here. This is a denser area, and air is less dense. Right? It needs to travel from denser area to a less dense area. So if you manage to travel, uh, so sometimes if the total if the incident angle is more than a critical angle, you experience a reflection. Right? So like we say, uh, normally glasses, not mirror, glasses, right? Because glasses, you're supposed to be able to see through the glass. That's very normal. But uh, sometimes, you know, you're able to see something at the back of the glass. Okay? When you look at the glass, you'll be, you, you will see reflection. Instead of a refraction, you see reflection. So this is one of the examples of total internal reflection. That means what happens is it will be reflected. Right? Okay? So... It, it comes down to a question of a diamond, you know, right? So why do diamonds sparkles, okay? Why do diamonds sparkle? The reason why diamonds sparkle is, is it because the light actually travels from a denser medium as it tries to escape into a less dense medium. It doesn't, it, it did not make it, okay? Instead of, uh, instead of exiting, basically it reflected in the diamond itself, causing, causing it to sparkle. So let me show you an example, okay? Let me show you an example. Let's say this is a diamond. Alright, it's a diamond. And as you know, diamond has a lot of cutting, right? It has a lot of cutting. So we're gonna draw all diamond. We're not gonna draw all the cuttings. Okay, so this let's say this is a very simple cut. So when the light enters here, it's supposed it exit. It exits through the other side, right? But it did not manage to exit. It reflected, it reflected, it reflected, it reflected. It keeps on reflecting inside. So the more it reflects, right, and this is what makes the diamond special because uh, the light actually traps in the diamond itself, causing it to, you know, to to shine and to flicker, not to flicker, to basically to uh, to shine, okay? So um, this is what makes it sparkles and so on, right? So the light actually traps in the prison itself, okay? All right, okay? So you do expect the density of the what do you call this the diamond is actually higher than the density of the air. So that's what makes it able to do it. Lah. But if let's say the density of air is more than the density of the diamond, then total internal reflection will not occur. Okay. <coughs> so okay, this is the first second thing. The incident angle is is more than the critical angle. Okay, this is very interesting. What does it mean by incident angle? more than the critical angle so the incident angle here is more than the 
critical angle. So what does it mean? Let's look at this diagram over here. You see, huh? if the angle of the incident, this is called the incident angle, right? Incident angle is less than the critical angle. So basically, it's less than the critical angle. The, ang the light refracts away from the normal. So from the glass itself, glass is dense. And it's less dense. So it doesn't have, uh, if it's less than a critical angle, total internal reflection will not occur. So it means it doesn't reflect it downwards. It doesn't happen. It will not happen. Okay. So as we increase the incident angle, the angle, as we increase the angle over here, you can see here, as we, it will come to a point, as we increase the angle here, this is the refracted angle. The refracted angle will tend to get slower and lower. Basically, it will drop as we increase this part okay so what happens you will reach a stage whereby the reflected line this is the reflected line you reach a stage that the reflected line will be sitting on top of the glass itself so we have actually reached what we call this as the critical angle what is it critical because any increase in the any increase of what they call this the incident angle will result the what they call this will result the refraction to experience reflection so like let's here let, let's look here um if the angle of incidence is equals to the critical angle the light refracts at 90 degrees to the normal so you can see there's a 90 degrees over here 90 degrees over here okay so if the angle basically of the incidence is greater, so if the angle actually greater, it increases, the angle increases. So now it increases. Then the critical angle uh, is greater than the critical angle. Total internal reflection occurs. So instead of, you know, instead of refracting, now it reflects. So this is the case whereby uh, total internal reflection occurs. So the next question is, is there uh is there is the critical angle will the critical angle be the same for every single dense medium no it will not be the same just for your information right it depending on the density of the medium itself so if the density of the medium is let's say uh, for diamond and the density of the medium for uh, oil they have both different critical angle all right so you have to calculate it in order to find the real critical angle and it can be done mathematically, all right? It's not something impossible. It can be done mathematically. And we we, we might want to go through that later on, okay? Like, formula demonstrate the occurrence of a total internal reflection. Let's look here. You look here, the light ray actually travels, and there's an air inside here. The total infinite reflection occurs. So this is basically a fiber optic. In a fiber optic, right, so what happens is the light actually bounces from you know from one it bounces to another one all right it bounces inside so when it bounces inside this is what we call it reflection total internal reflection occurs in the fiber optics line okay and you look here condition to happen total internal reflection can only occurs when light travels from high density medium to lower density medium this is the one that we discussed earlier Right, the first one is done. The second one, total internal reflection can only occur when the angle of incident ray is more than the critical angle. So this is the one that we discussed also with the example I've given to you. Okay, so let's look at the second page now. I mean the next page now, page 6. Oh, okay, this is interesting. Page 6, okay. Let's look at page six. I think I better move this thing a bit far. Okay, uh, in a page six, uh, let me see, is there a, is there a page seven? Oh, page seven is about lenses, okay. Okay, no problem. Okay, page six is also about um refractive index. Okay, we are still in the refractive index region. In a page six, you can see uh it actually tells you about the 
about the the real debt versus the apparent debt. Okay, the real debt versus the apparent debt. You can see over here, uh, refractive index also can be calculated by D is the real debt. This is the real debt divided by D, a smaller D, which is called as an apparent debt. Okay, what is the difference between a real debt and an apparent debt? Okay, very simple here. Let me explain to you these two. Imagine this is a swimming pool. Right, this is a swimming pool. And you are standing on top of here. Okay, and if you drop a coin into the swimming pool, uh, so the coin is actually here. Now you drop a coin here, correct? Because uh, because this is water, right? This is water, or we call it H2O, right? And this is air. So we do know that basically this is less dense, and this is dense, it's medium, okay? So what is actually happening here is, um, when you look at the water, let me use a different color. So if you look down, you tend to realize that actually, Sorry, I wouldn't say you look down, sorry. So because our object reflects light, okay, so basically this light will travel in this case. Uh, let me show it to you. Okay. This is the object. This is the... image okay you can see the object and the image okay you can see the object as well as the image so if you look at this thing carefully right okay when you're looking uh, from the top view all the way down to the swimming pool you you tend to realize that right the the coin right this is actually a coin the coin tend to be nearer towards you actually, but in actual fact, it is actually deeper. It's very deep, okay? Why is this phenomenon happens? Because uh, light actually bends when it, when, it, when it goes out from the water, right? When you leave the water, it actually bends, right? And because it is bending, right, we tend to see that it is nearer, but it's actually an illusion. It's not real, okay? And, right, so this is a normal line. You can see from here, this is a normal line. right and because uh you can see it's a normal line so you tend you, you tend to see that basically the image is actually nearer towards you but it is not it is actually quite far away it's actually at the bottom so that's the reason why like certain swimming pools they don't allow you know you to students or maybe uh, children to stand at the side of the swimming pool uh even though it may look shallow but in actual fact the depth is really deep actually right so it can be dangerous even though you're able to see the bottom of the swimming pool, but it doesn't mean that it is shallow. It's actually quite deep, all right? It is all optical illusion, okay? It is not real, and because it, it doesn't portray that it is deep, right? So some, you know, some younger teenager, or maybe a young, some children will tend to swim, then they'll get themselves in a danger, all right? Okay? So if you are actually in the sea, okay, and the sea is very calm, and you're able to see the bottom of the sea so <coughs> you tend to think that the depth is pretty shallow right the sea but in actual fact it is very very deep right so this is also another formula is a real depth versus a parent depth okay okay so let me explain to you here this d represents what we call real depth that means from here to here is called the real depth right real depth apparent depths are what we call this as a fake depth the one that is more towards like optical illusion so this is the apparent depth this apparent depth right <coughs> so if you take the real depth divided by the apparent depth basically that actually tells us about the refractive index as well very very simple so in the illustration over here you can see that what happens is 
the eyes is looking into the water so i want to draw an eye over here it's looking into the water and this observer tends to think that the image is here right so the distance from here to here this is what we call this as from here to here same a to b is called apparent depth so apparent depth right okay well this one is actually the real depth the real depth will always be from here to here uh we don't measure this way i'm so sorry uh wait a minute let me change this a bit okay okay this is uh, apparent that is from here to here from here to here it is called as apparent that you know this is called real that okay so by taking the real depth divided by the apparent that always measure from the surface you're gonna get the refractive index as well same thing okay so few formulas you really remember here the first formula is a formula of speed very important the second formula is the snail's formula that we have to know as well the third one is still the snail's formula and the last one will be the the real depth versus the apparent depth the formula for the real depth versus apparent depth uh, I would have to say that A is, this A is supposed to be here, from here to here. Okay, so this is something that you, you, you have to understand. Alright, uh, let's look at the next page here. Let's see first. I'm going to move this thing over here. Next page. Let's look at the next page. Alright. Page 7. Oh, okay. Page 7 actually tells you about lenses, right? Lenses are like, you know, spectacle lenses, right? So this page 7 actually explain a bit more about lenses. So we have different types of lenses, all right? Uh, different types of, because uh, every one of us, we have different power. And depending on the position of the object, the characteristics of the image is, you know, it is different, all right? So if you look closely at this diagram here, lenses allows light to pass through. It is different than mirrors. Mirrors reflected light, but lenses allows light to pass through. So you can actually look at it. Okay, let's compare the first one here, this one, and let's compare mirrors and lenses. This is lenses, right? Okay, let's compare a bit. So you can see over here, the light actually enters. Oh my god. The light actually enters from here. This is the this is the object, correct? So what happens is the light will enter into the object, the light will enter and it will actually pass it through the focal point. This is the focal point. The red color one is the focal point, right? You can see from there. Okay. And you see the light passes through. That's the reason why it is drawn on the other side. Okay. Uh, if you will compare this and, and mirror, you, you realize something different. Yeah, look here. You see, what happens is, okay, for reflection, for reflection, right, okay, for mirror, it reflected. Look at here. This is the object, right? For mirror, this is the object. Okay. So the light, basically, I mean, the light here, it reaches here, but as it touches the screen, the green color ones are not counted, okay? If you're looking at the blue color ones, right? It will pass through, it will be reflected downwards, passing through the focal point. Can you see that? It actually reflected, right? So, uh, mirror reflects, but lenses refract. That means the light can pass us through, but it will bend. It will bend a bit. Okay? So, let me erase this so that it doesn't confuse you later on. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? So you can see from here, the light actually passes through. Okay, the light actually passes through. Okay, and it, when it passes through, it cuts through the point F, the focal point. And if the image is before F, the focal point, right? then you do expect that the image will have a virtual image, a magnified as well as a non-inverted images. And the second one, if you look here, if the object is placed on the F, it's the same like a mirror, the image will always be infinity. That means the image will always be at infinity. Okay? 
okay okay let's look here if the object is placed between the f and the c or the 2f you can see over here each of the red color dots the red color line you see here the red color line it tells you the the focal point between f and 2f you see the image is magnified inverted and real okay right so you see here the light actually comes here passes through the lens cuts through the f remember i told you earlier that focal point is a point where all the light will passes through not all sorry most of the light will passes through so this actually demonstrate to you that the light actually passes through the f the focal point over here see the light will pass through <coughs> right but if you compare this to a what they call this to a uh, to a mirror mirror reflects in this case lenses reflects reflects means the light is able to pass through but then it bends bends and it move through the lenses okay let's compare this diagram let's compare this diagram and the mirror let's see the difference so mirror is supposed to reflect so this is refract let's look at refract can you see that same thing object is between f and c to f right okay you see the blue color lines if you look at the blue color line closely you will realize that the light goes all the way to the mirror it reflects when it reflects it passes through the f again see that ah that's what i'm trying to tell you and this i'm trying to tell you the f is the focal point where most of the light will pass through at the same time i want to show you the difference between a mirror as well as the lenses okay let me erase this <coughs> and let me go back to the same picture okay cool so these are our, these are other characteristics over here the object okay when he said 2c the object is at 2c when the object is at c or 2f the image will be on the other side as well okay but the image will be real same size as well as inverted okay so what happens when the object is more than c is more than c so what kind of object will have it more than c uh, what type of application will use a lens which is more than the uh, more than the C? Telescope. Stars are very very far away. So normally it's because if you're using a telescope to look at the stars because they're very small, this is very cool stuff. You see, you're gonna produce a real image. First thing, it's gonna be a real image. It's gonna be diminished. That's the reason why a real star is very very big. But if you're using a telescope, you tend to see the star a bit smaller because it diminish over here. And it is inverted. <coughs> so what do you mean by inverted? So if you look at the star, if you look at uh, what they call this, if you look at uh, what they call the sky, if you tend to see there's a few stars over here. But through a telescope, if you don't invert it back through a telescope, the star may look on the other side. So it will be always like in, in 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 opposite direction okay why because the image are all inverted you see the image are on the opposite direction you can see the arrow sign over here it means this is means straight going up means up upright but if you look at here the image is going downwards it means it's inverted inverted means it is in the opposite direction okay and last one uh we uh it also want to talk about the concave lenses Concave lenses will always produce the image of virtual and diminish. This is the concave lenses. Virtual and diminish. Is it clear? Virtual means what? When we say virtual means uh, it's an image that can be formed on a screen. You cannot form the image on the screen. Um, diminish means the image will always be very, very small comparing to the object. Look at the object. So big. And look at the image so small so this actually tells you what the image produced will always be smaller than the object okay all right okay um i'm not going to go more than this uh because the reason why uh, let me see the next page first i just do not want you to get confused for everything 
then it's gonna be waste of my time all right um okay 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 uh, don't worry about this uh we're gonna discuss this pretty much on our next lesson okay we only have like one or two more lessons to go uh, for this chapter okay so i think that'll be all for tonight okay uh hopefully my you know my videos helps you a lot okay uh anyway if you can't if you still can't understand i mean my teaching you can always skype me or whatsapp me all right i'll be able to assist you i will try my best to maybe to produce another video for you